I don't necessarily have to have the best product out there in terms of like the most luxurious home and whatnot to be getting all the bookings. You'd be surprised if you actually look at the market, how many Airbnbs are successful that is just a small, like homey home, nothing crazy about it, but because the hospitality and the experience was amazing and the connection was there that they do have over 400 reviews, 4.98 star rating and whatnot. So you can learn a lot just from seeing that you don't necessarily have to have the penthouse with the floor to ceiling windows. And all. of course, there's places in the market for both, right? But you definitely have your clientele that's looking for that strong experience. So we always try to take that same approach with our kind of do a mixture of both. Of course, we want to luxury and have like the nice amenities and everything and a nicer design, but then also not forgetting about what truly um, stands an Airbnb apart from hotels is that personal connection, that experience, that newness, right? They try to, they're trying to build a new memory with their family, their loved ones, etc. So we always into everyone is so focused on interior design, but there's other four senses that a lot of people forget about, right? It's a matter of what you're hearing, what you taste, what you feel. Um, and so we try to implement all sensor, sensors into as soon as they check in within the first five minutes, how can they, so we'll play, our brand is Jungle House. So obviously the jungle. So we'll play bird sounds. Um, they walk in so it's a different experience right it impacts with the jungle um we'll give um obviously you from columbus so you're familiar with the buckeye chocolates so we'll give um what are you trying to say, man? Yep. yeah <laughs> but yeah we'll give them the buckeye chocolate so they have a local treat that they can help remember us we add a scent to all of our homes so that way just like with anything a lot of people will remember their grandpa father's cologne smell or something because that's something that triggers their memory same thing here if we can be a conversation a year from now two years from now hey do you remember that airbnb at jungle house and they remember it because something triggered it from one of the five senses then we're top of mind where it could be another referral two years from now or whatnot so just trying to think long term with your business on that aspect of things yeah keeping i think just home comes to mind right like having that like homey experience, you know, house versus a home. And, uh, but then also you've, you've leveraged that for strategic upsells as well. Cause I would assume you're maybe capturing some data on the front end to say, um, you know, for example, and I would like for you to elaborate on this as well. Yeah. I'm coming into town because of a buddy's wedding because of an Ohio state game, because of, I'm just coming into town to visit family. Um, so you're, your team and your systems that you have in place on the initial intake form is taking that information, I would assume 99.9% of the time, it's going to be the same 10 responses. And from those 10 responses, you can then upsell to say, oh, you're going to your buddy's wedding. Um, I don't know, fill in the blank of, you can maybe upsell them on, would you like a case of beer when you arrive? Uh, would you like uh, whatever it may be, or like, you know, we don't have the Thursday night booked or the Thursday booked. He's in town from, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, but maybe he got a little too drunk on Wednesday. Maybe you're doing these things for everyone where you're trying to find, um, my question is strategic upsells where it's personalized, but yet some of them are not going to be personalized. There's going to be some things you can maybe, you know, everyone would qualify for these upsells. I think that's a genius idea as well, where you're increasing that lifetime value coming all the way back to what you were saying. I don't care about occupancy percentage. I care about profit. So if one person books this month or 10, I just got to hit that number for each property. That's it. So um, definitely on the upsells, that's another strategy we use, right? And the big easy one that it applies to everyone is early check-in, late checkout, right? No matter what the reason to stay, especially they're coming in town for a wedding. Perfect. You're going to be staying up all night, drinking, you're probably going to want to sleep in a little bit. That's the prime opportunity to sell a late checkout so that way they can sleep in and whatnot. Um, and the other thing that will not only push it to the per person who's booking it, but to maybe a party of eight, right? So you just need one person at that eight group person group 
to say, hey, we should probably pay for the late checkout because I'm trying to sleep in. I don't need the, we don't just focus on the person who booked it, but out of the whole party. So we always um, will collect their emails and then right away we send them an email and text message showing them about our upsells and our opportunities and whatnot. So that way, if one of them decides to, they can purchase that. Um, obviously, you can personalize things. So if they're coming in town for a birthday, we'll do a birthday package where they can surprise their significant other. And we put like a happy birthday banner on the wall, a bottle of champagne and cake, uh, chocolate cake. And then we put whether it's like if it's our significant other, we'll put rose petals on the bed. Just so Ooh, it, yeah. for them. Right. Uh, we'll dim the lights. Are you responsible for any pregnancies? Uh, probably too many. Probably too many. I've uh, found Do you have my- like an upsell for like uh, one for lube and then one for like plan B? That's uh, we're going to have to, you know, at that point. And- add more to it but uh but, you know so you can get very creative with it the big one definitely is like the romance we do a romance package too so similar to the happy birthday but instead of that it's like an i love you banner with the rose petals and everything obviously if they're staying in longer we'll upsell them on pre-stocked fridge so they can come in and everything's already stocked in so accessories um so there's different ways that you can go about it. And it's all depending on your market, right? What's all demanding in your market. If you're, um, I've seen people do like golf cart rentals and whatnot, depending on just where you're at. Um, it all differentiates, but no, there's. Or can, even like uh, renting a car, like people that have like the Turo. The Turo yeah. Yep. Turo business. Like, Hey, do you want to, you know, rent out the Tesla or one of the cars and park in the driveway? You can just go ahead and start using it yeah so, you yeah, know and that's where you can get very creative and smart and efficient having one business benefit the other business right um and so but to your point um yeah now upsells definitely increase the revenue transaction per client right and i would say so we actually are probably a lot more different than most other hosts that um don't try to aim for high occupancy um, just being that obviously, yes, yeah, so you want to make sure every re- uh, reservation is profitable. But my argument against that is the more people that stay with you, it builds higher brain awareness. And that person can also refer you in the future. So, um, and then also that you get more reviews. Obviously, Airbnb likes that you're getting booked up more. So they're going to naturally boost you on the SEO, right? So there's a lot of benefits to it as long as you have the systems in place. That's where you have to find like a good happy medium because if you're running it by yourself, you don't want to be too booked up because then you're running yourself rampant and it's not worth it. But if you have systems and automations in place, then at that point, it's not really whether you're 90% occupied or 60% occupied. As long as you're still profitable and hitting your targets, I would argue that it's like a hybrid approach that you're optimizing revenue, but then you're also getting more exposure. You may not be as profitable on some of the bookings, but it's helping you on a long-term perspective on getting more reviews, more SEO boost, more raving fans, more social media followers, more all that. And you're also getting, um, I like that because one thing that you have brought up and we've connected on this in the past and you said it again, the book, uh, raving fans, the book raving fans is incredible for anyone that, uh, I mean, I think anyone, even if you are not a business owner, uh, how can you create raving fans? How can you create your clients, your customers to rave about the experience? Because the highest converting type of lead in business is a referral from a current or a past client. If you do all these different ways to market, the likelihood of closing that person for a product, service, whatever it may be, is going to be significantly lower than a current client referral or a past client referral. So what you're saying, and I like that, that's actually a good way um, because I've I've most of the time been like, no, it doesn't matter, just net profit. But what you're saying, uh, you've measured this data and you've seen it to say, sure, there are, that does make sense, but there is a happy medium to where it actually may make sense to get uh, a couple more people to book per month and you make the same amount of net profit, but 
the probability of you getting more bookings in six months or a year and collecting more profit, you know, 12 months from now or whenever that time comes, because you got more five star reviews, you got uh, more referrals, more emails, and then you can put in an email list. You said you use MailChimp to where you can have an email blast go out to them and they can do direct bookings, cuts out the hosting platform. Tell. But how do you? How many people would you say have booked as far as being a raving fan or referrals? Do you know like that statistic by chance, like maybe 10% or 20% of your bookings are from past bookings, from referrals? So last year it was 12% and something that we're trying to increase little by little. And we've seen that. Um, and so that's one data and metric that we'll, that we're reviewing and whatnot. And the other is, I'm a big advocate in the 80-20 rule and I take it once like the 90-10. So looking at your top 10% or top 20% of your clients and your booking, bookings that come in and then studying that. Um, so because at the end of the day, if they're bringing in your top 20% of your clients is bringing in 80% of your revenue, which if you run the numbers, I'm sure you'll be surprised to see something similar in that aspect of things, no matter what business you're in studying that because that's where you're going to get most of your benefit if you're targeting to that client right that's your essential what they call in the airbnb industry your guest avatar but in any industry just your customer avatar right so you want to cater to that person so studying that um all right who is it it's mostly groups of eight of people coming in like friends coming in for maybe a bachelor party whatever it may be that you're seeing the trend on those or maybe people coming in for the college football game so you want to make sure your house is more favorable and friendly for something of that nature um, or better yet that's the type of property that you may need to go acquire next correct yeah yeah so run the research and that's where i like the high occupancy because you get more data then too so that way you can you know more rather than paying an air dna trying to get like what they some of the data there is guessing Right. You actually have strong in-house data that can help you continue to grow and compound and know what to acquire in the future. All right. We're seeing our three bedrooms. We're doing a lot better than our one bedrooms. So maybe we should start targeting more three bedroom homes instead of one to two. Right. So something of that nature.